All right. Joy, joy, joy. This is Swami G, the Orange Cowboy. It is Friday night, 8.52. And this is my second trial of something called Blue Jeans, which allows me to do video conferencing and go on Facebook Live at the same time. So I did my first Facebook Live in a long time, just like two, three days ago. I don't even remember what I was talking about, but it was pretty nice. A lot of people came in and I got kind of jazzed up about it. And I've got a couple of downloads of things to talk about and I'm thinking, well, let's try it again. It's uh, been a, you know, it's Friday night, so it's the end of the week. Energy's kind of chilled out now, had a little time to relax. And it's, I thought it's a good time to talk about a topic which I call, how do your angels talk to you? And while I am doing that, I have no clue if anybody's watching. I'm going to go on Facebook Live, go on Facebook, go to my site and see if I can see me there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's somebody else live. Oh, that's me live. Okay. There we go. So, Jessica, oh, this could be my other one. Oh, I got three people there. I wonder. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm not sure if that's me or that was the first one. Let's see. Here we go. What's happening here? What is that there? I'm trying to figure out if this is my live show. How to find out what's my live show. There we are. There we're live. That's it. Okay, we're definitely live. Hi, Jessica, if you're still with us. Chris was on before, or he gave me a thumbs up. Howdy doody. Chris, out in, out in uh, Connecticut. And so I thought I'd talk tonight, and I'd like to actually more than talk about it, I'd like to get your thoughts about this, your experience, I should say. It's all about experience. There's no right or wrongs. It's what is your experience? And the experience I'm curious about is how do your angels talk to you? And this is what I mean by that. In our culture, in the way I grew up, if somebody wanted something from you, they were very emphatic. They might even talk forcefully at you or yell at you, even parents would yell when I was a kid in your own it was stated in your own good you know I'll tell you a story for example uh, years a few years after my parents died and I was very sensitive to the way people spoke and after that and I was visiting my mother's parents my grandparents on my mother's side and they were shouting back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and I just started half in tears said, please stop yelling at each other. Please stop arguing, you know, as if, you know, life is, why argue life is so precious or fragile? Please stop arguing. And they stopped and they looked at each other. And in the same voice, at the same time, they said, we're not arguing. <laughs> so their, their idea of a conversation, of a normal conversation, was loud and in their face and uh, so it's all relative the point i'm making is that we become used to that we watch high pressure commercials and and high high energy sports and in your face everything is in your face yelling 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 and for me i kind of when I used to think, well, how come you know I don't I don't get direct messages? I was waiting for those yelling, yelling, yelling stuff. And about ten years ago, a little over ten years ago, I moved upstate. I have this beautiful four acres of land out in nature. Hardly a car goes by. Peace and quiet. And well, now they the. Uh, 
maybe you just heard the, the heater shut off, but normally I just have the wood stove on, so even the furnace fan doesn't come on. So it's really still up here. And in that stillness, over the 10 years, I would start to hear spirit more, I hear angels more. And occasionally in the past, I've had them in really big events, like knowing, being told my parents are gonna die, or showing that, oh, seeing in my eye, what's the answer to a question. But I, like a few summers ago, I was sitting here, and I had just had a couple of what I call omens. There was, you know, I've never seen an owl in person, live. And they come out at night, and all of a sudden, I saw an owl on my fence post in the middle of the day. Pulled out my goggles and I said, what is that fat bird? It was like, holy cow. I could see the, the beak and everything was an owl. Really cool. And in the back of my mind, I'm saying, well, owls are mystical. They relate to on some level, transformation or passing or death. But I didn't really put too much of a point on it. Hey, Mark is here. Hello, Mark. Hello, Swami. So How we're live you? on Facebook. And uh, the topic of tonight's conversation is how do your angels talk to you? So it's a very appropriate conversation because we've had that conversation quite a lot lately. Right. I'll just finish up on this story, and then I'll bring you in. All right, you got it. So the so I'm talking about how I saw these this owl on my fence post in the middle of the day, and then a few days later I saw him again. And so it's like, wow, okay, that's two omens. And then all of a sudden one day I found on the internet a show about mediumship, psychic mediums. And as I was watching the show, I realized this person is so much helping the people she's talking to. And I was half in tears how beautiful it was. And at the end of the show, spirit, all of a sudden my eye, everything went black and swirled. And then I heard that spirit, that angel voice that said, if you'd like, you can go deeper into your mediumship now. And this is what I mean by how do your angels talk to you? They weren't in my face. They didn't say, you gotta do this or nothing like that. They just said, if you'd like, you know, dear, if you'd like. And what a lovely thing, you know, it's like a spirit grandparent or something. And so I've become more and more attuned that they offer, they ask you, they invite you, would you like to do this? And what I found is when I say, yes, I'll do that, they take over, that they do all the heavy lifting and things just happen miraculously. And so I'm wondering if that's just me, how many people have that kind of experience with their angels? And do you have other experiences? How do your angels talk to you? So how about you, Mark? Would, uh, you've, you've, we've done a little bit of talking with uh, the Archangel Michael. I have, and I'm still new at this. Yeah, we're all, Beginners, <laughs> no matter um, how many years. Uh, yeah, it, it, but I'm brand new, and it's um, it's an interesting thing. I I don't hear a change in voice or anything. I just hear my own thoughts, and okay. uh, you, you tell me that that's somebody coming through to me, and and it seems to work. I've I've gotten right. help out of out of in, 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 in a, a traffic jam was one thing that comes to mind. Yeah, you were on the phone, you called me from the highway, you said we're, we're stalled on the highway, we're going two miles an hour, and right. there's a police car and a, and a stalled car. And I said, well, let me talk to Michael about that. And I said, Michael, can you clear that out? And you said, oh my goodness, we're moving. <laughs> Within like 30 seconds, I think. Absolutely, it, and it worked. Yeah, it worked very, very, very well. Well, I wanted to join in and wish you a happy Friday. Thank you. Um, I will be seeing you in San Diego. I wanted right. you to know that. Oh, uh, oh at, very good. Yeah. And, we'll talk. Uh, we'll get the dates. Um, I'll be down there Thursday, Wednesday, the, the night before. Right, whatever that Wednesday, is, Wednesday, and I'll be picking you up at the airport. Oh, wonderful. But I'm being called in the other room. 
And as and you folks can see, Mark has got this is a TV, his radio show, Late Night Health Radio. He's on KABC in, out of California, but you can, it's an internet show. You can hear it on his website, Late Night Health Radio, with Mark Great. Allen. Isn't that a coincidence? Yes. Well, how, think of how fortunate you were to get a show with your name on it. They, it, you was, it was anybody was fortuitous. Yes. <laughs> And it's actually on, uh, it's Late Night Health, it's on uh, on KABC, you can actually go to KABC.com. Okay. Um, uh, if you're not in the Los Angeles area, and it airs at 1 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning, or tonight, okay. depending on your point of view. Yeah, well that is uh, Late Night, then, yeah. It is. I yeah. appreciate the time. I All right. didn't know what I was doing <laughs> when I signed in. I raced yeah, in, I, I put my do cheese either. down, and so I need to go see my wife. But All right. um, well, you have a great you're looking Friday. good in orange. Yeah, okay. And okay. Uh, we will talk um, in the next day or two to figure yes, out our coordinate for yeah. San Diego. Got it. Thanks. Joy, so joy, joy. Thanks joy, for joy, joy. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. Uh, that's, let's see, what is that? That was, I, I didn't know how he could even pop in like that. So I'm learning. I also don't see any comments. It does say I'm live. And I didn't even see Mark pop in on a listing. So anyway, uh, for, oh, I have two comments. Let's see, one comment I see. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. Marla Torres. Hello, Marla. Hello, Jorge. Ah, oh, we spoke twice today. Uh, I was interviewed on a wonderful show, the Freedompreneur, Nick, and I forgot the name of his show. It's but he he's a, a he has a big sign up called Freedompreneur, and he teaches people to be to be entrepreneurs and be free with their life, and so Jorge was there too, I believe. So if, if you're still there, any of you three, if you want to type in a question, I mean, not a question, but how do angels speak to you? How does spirit speak to you? If you want to put that in there, type that in. We'll take a look at that. And I'm curious, it's something I haven't really asked other people specifically. I mean, we talk about spirit talks to us but i never ask the mechanics of it or the the specifics about it right and one of the things mark said and i would have gone into it more deeply with him is something that i used to think too is like well when i first started wanting to have more connection inside of me because my decisions were not always great or they weren't getting me where I wanted to go, or they were getting me where I didn't want to go. And I started to say, well, I really want to hear God. I want to hear spirit. I want to hear angels, whatever you are comfortable calling that. And the conversation came back, well, listen. And when I first started to listen, I honestly couldn't determine whether I was making it up whether I was just being a wise guy, whether it was sincere, whether I was sincerely wanting to know. It was, there was so many questions. <laughs> and, um, so it was a process and over time I kept saying, I really want to be, please help me be sincere. So when I'm asking questions, I really want to mean it. I don't want to be a wise guy. And please let me be able to distinguish between what's really being I'm hearing and what I'm imagining or making up. And the more I practiced, the more I started to learn how to lean into my feelings more. And as I would go with it more, usually it was almost always there, the right answers. So I'm gonna take a break and Marla says, she hears through her intuition usually. Well, thank you for that, Marla. So when you hear through your intuition, does that mean you're you're hearing words, or are you? Is it a, like a gut feeling? What? How? How? What does that mean? What would the specifics be for you? 
So she says she did, however, I did, however, get a gorgeous sunrise that I believe was a message from Archangel Ariel because of the bright pink that dominated, that dominated it. Ironically, none of my coworkers who were on the same shift as me saw it. Now that's another cool thing. Uh, this is this is a great show already. So Marla saw the sunrise. She saw the colors, and she somehow felt it was a message from Ariel, Archangel Ariel. She saw it. She felt it. But nobody else there saw it. So there's a million questions here. The first question I would say to myself is, am I crazy? But another explanation is, if you're looking for communication with spirit, we see what we look for in life. And if other people around us are not looking for it, they're not going to see it. And so here's a metaphor for that. When we put blinders on, you put blinders on a horse so they don't get spooked by the things by the side of them. So if you say to the horse, did you see the sunrise over there? They're going to, there's no sunrise. I don't see any sunrise. But if you don't have blinders on, you're seeing the sunrise there. So it's like that in life. What we look for, we get. So it reminds me of that old movie, Oh God, with George Burns. And God showed up. And George Burns was God. He showed up in the courtroom and he, he, the, the preacher was a phony preacher and he, and he just, you know, laid him out for who he was in front of everybody. And at the end, he says, well, as I leave now, everybody's going to pretend or not pretend, but say, well, that must have not really happened. That couldn't have happened. And they'll just talk themselves out of that experience. But if you really want, if you're sincere enough, and you want your life to be connected to the divine, and I can't think of anything more important, then you just keep at this and you don't question the crazy part. In fact, when people call me crazy, then I know I'm doing the right thing. I'm listening to spirit. Crazy just means I'm not following my logical, rational mind to its own extent. We need the heart. We need the mind. We need the left brain. We need the right brain the right brain, the left brain. But our culture is 100% brain, 0% heart. I'm being a little bit ex exaggerating, but you get it. We're mostly right brain. We're mostly left brain. We're mostly logical, rational in the world. And so I'm not saying we don't use it, but you know we need it closer to 50-50 instead of 99.9 to 0.1. <laughs> Let's see here. Christy is watching. Hello, Christy. And let's see. So thanks for sharing that, Marla. Anybody else want to, Jessica, if you're still here, uh, how do your angels talk to you? How does spirit talk to you? Or anything in this realm, how do you know they're talking to you? Do you feel it? Do you see it? Do you hear it? Do you get external Omens, do you see sunrises? Do the do the owls come in front of you? Do the raptors come to you? Hello, Veronica, all the way out from Tobago. If you're in Tobago, if you want to ride horses bareback, without a bit in the mouth, without shoes on their hooves, and ride in the Caribbean Sea, a dream, go see Veronica dealing with horses. And if you have children with ADHD or any kind of challenges that our society is trying to force these kids into a box and then they say something's wrong with them, riding horses just opens them up. And Veronica does a whole thing, a whole program with, the, with those special kids, the gifted kids is what I'll call them. Tobago, Veronica, healing with horses. We are talking about how the angels talk with us, how do they, whether it's spirit, angels, God, nature, whatever you call it, how do they talk to you? For me, they're gentle. They say, oh, dear, if you'd like, you can do this. Would you like to do this? They don't say, go and do that. <laughs> you know? So let's see. We've got um, Christy says she sees feathers quite often. Oh, that's great. You know, that's 
How many people actually walking down the street, you find feathers? That's just, Many people believe that's angels dropping signs or letting you know that whatever you're thinking about has come true. I had a, a, a guru sister, a, a woman who's a part of the same, uh, who, we both have this, had, had the same guru in India, and she came to visit my ashram here. And I was telling her about this, and she goes, oh, that, that's not true. And then we talked about something, you know, think about something you'd like to do in a spiritual way. We went for a walk, and guess what? She found feathers. And after that, she, she finds them all the time, and she's, she's a believer now. So thank you, Christy, for that. How do you, how do you uh, think about that, Christy? When you find feathers, what does it mean to you? What does it does it help you answer your questions or make a choice in life or what does it validate something? Uh, Veronica says we think and talk about you often. Heart hugs, heart hugs, horse heart hugs. I met Veronica when I was living in Tobago, and I wanted to ride horses bareback in the ocean, and I went over to her property, and it was lunchtime, so I was waiting for them. And I went around to the different horses and I just, they showed me what their health issues were and I just did energy healings on them. And when Veronica came out, I told her what I saw. She says, yep, that's what happened with each of them. And then they all got better. So we became good friends. <laughs> all right, Christy says, usually, I usually just say hi guys or thank them for something I was asking for. Nice, gratitude is such a great thing. You know, having gratitude about anything is the surest way to get more of whatever we like. You know, if you if you have a friend and you see something that reminds you of them and you get them a gift and you go, look what I got you. And they go, eh, you, you're not going to be too excited to give them a gift anymore, right? So if you get these great miracles and you go, eh, it's not the big one, well, then spirit why would spirit want to be inspired to give you more gifts so being grateful that we're around our angels that we hear them we appreciate them it's a great way to grow into that deeper and deeper communication and it really is a it's a life process like mark says i'm a beginner well he really is i mean it's just a few months we've been talking about it but there's no end to it. It goes deeper and deeper. It's love. Love, there's no end to love. It gets more and more deep. And so it's a lovely thing. Santosh Pande. Hello. Thanks for watching. And uh, let's see here. Angels from Christy. So anything, how do your angels talk to you? How do your spirits talk to you? One of the things that, so Mark was saying, and I was started to talk about before, how do we know? So there are different ways. We may see omens, like I saw the owl, and Christy saw the sunset or the sunrise. We may smell something, smell roses, and then the saint is around us, or this, we smell uh, the, the cologne that our uncle or grandfather used to wear when he was alive. You know, things like that. So all the different senses. Feeling, we may get a feeling in our shoulder or in our a gut feeling. or. But if we hear it, sometimes we hear it. And how do we know if it's us, if we're making it up, or if it's spirit? Now, a couple of years back, quite a while back, I was listening to an NPR radio show with a neuroscientist. And what they would do is that they would tell somebody a question, they'd ask somebody a question, and they would watch their brain waves. And what they found was that just before they asked the question, that person's brain who was going to hear the question, their brain said to them, get ready, here comes a question. Isn't that interesting? So we're starting to approach the topic of empathic conversation, speaking without words, speaking, now that, that word, <laughs> now, the word itself is not even coming out of my mouth, so to me that's an angel joke. 
Empathic is there's another word for that it begins with an E too. So I used to get these questions in my head that I wanted to ask God or spirit or angels. And I go, oh, that's a good question. And I would ask it. Oh, there's an angel ding. Ah. And, the, and, and then God or the angels would say, oh, that's a good question. I can answer that. And then the more I did that, I started to think, well, what if they were the ones putting that thought in my head? And there's another angel ding confirming that for me. That's how I think. You know, you hear the angel dings, whatever you're talking about, that's a confirmation. Is it crazy? Of course it's crazy. But it's a great way to live life because it's fun, it's 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 spontaneous, and <laughs> and it really just elevates me up to a making a, a good day, a great day, a great day, a divine day, a joyful day. So I've come to the point that when any thought comes in my head, any it's I take it as spirit is putting that thought in my head. Let's have this conversation now. Okay, great. Now, it used to be that I said it's only positive thoughts, putting me in a positive direction. Now I'm actually adding to that if I get a, a less than positive thought, a complaint or a grumpiness or something. I say, okay, well, if there's no mistakes, if, if God is really running the whole show here, and you can't just be perfect when I'm happy, <clears throat> when I'm getting what I want, and he's making a mistake when I'm not getting what I want. That's a little manipulative on my part. So if I'm feeling grumpy, well, then the, the upside of that is it allows me to, A, accept myself in the moment, and B, look at that and see how I can tweak that so it does not make me grumpy. So let's see here. Christy says... I always acknowledge my angels when I see the feathers. I know they're with me. Beautiful, beautiful. There are times I'm driving in the car and I'll suddenly feel an angel sit down right next to me there. I feel it's an angel. Um, I'm listening to a tape about angels, you know, something like that. And so it's really a matter of choosing how we want to think. And all I would say is, if you're on the fence about this, like the owl, try it out. You know, it's hang, find some of your friends who believe this so you won't get laughed at. You'll feel safe. Uh, you take a course, take a class. There's all sorts of groups on, on Facebook, angel groups and things like that. You could talk, talk out your questions. The point I wanted to just say, because uh, I think it's time to wrap up here, is what is the point it just went right out of my head <laughs> have fun with it enjoy it i guess there's no big uh it was just a very low-key conversation starter how do your angels talk to you play with that's it so experiment with it you know see if see if it makes your life better if it makes your life happier what do you believe life should be? Do you believe it's struggling and suffering? Then try doing it all on your own. Say, these are my thoughts. These are my muscles. This is my effort. Or you could say, I feel life should be joyful. It should be playful. That life should rise up to meet me. That the waves should rise up and take me in and have that beautiful surf then listen more to your angels. Then don't take credit for your thoughts. Don't take credit for your energy. Because who gave us that thought? Where, how did the mechanics of thoughts come to us? Who created us? You know. And in the Bhagavad Gita, India's, uh, the essence of India's uh, philosophical, or uh, I wouldn't really, wouldn't call it a religion in the sense that the British called in the Indus people a religion. They were just people who lived in nature and spirit in harmony with them. But it is also called a Hindu religion. So however you choose to call it that. That in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, don't be attached to your thoughts. Don't be attached to your actions. Give them over to God. 
spirit angels. They're the ones who are, think of them as our benevolent grandparents or something like that. Some people say, well, they are benevolent ETs, and certainly there, there may be, can be unbenevolent ETs, although a lot less than ever before. So if we think of things as benevolent, now if somebody, if we get a thought to hurt ourselves or to hurt somebody else, that's not something we listen to. I do definitely want to say that's my very strong belief there. <laughs> now, that raises a whole other discussion about when we start listening carefully. And if an angel says, oh dear, would you like to do that? Isn't that loving? Isn't that nurturing? If we say, Oh, I'm no good. Oh, I may, I, blah, blah, blah. I, you know, you're putting yourself down. You go, well, that's not the angel. That's definitely not the angel. That's our programming. That's our culture. That's our religion. That's our parents. That's our past life, whatever it is. But that's how, you know, that comes into the question of distinguishing, be, how do you distinguish between true angelic or divine thoughts and feelings and self-worth versus low self-esteem? and self-hatred because that's what that is so if you're having thoughts about putting yourself down that i would not call that an angelic thought it's not fun i don't want it i don't care where it comes from i want to love myself more pat myself on the shoulder many times during the day it's a well done you've had a good morning good thought good job well done you know you're relaxing you know it's like there's so much emphasis about sticking, forcing, and working, and hard, and suffering, and struggling. It's like, eh, it's not for me. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's not for me. I work hard. I focus hard. But not straining, not strenuously. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling in my heart. I want to care. I want to help myself and others. I want to be in joy so other people just smile and feel and joy when they see me. I want to see enlightenment on this earth. I want to see food in every belly, money in every pocket, health in every body, love in every heart, peace in every mind, and joy in every soul. That's what I want. And I I've dedicate my life to that in me and everybody else that I can help. That's a nice life. It's a simple life. Can't think of anything better. See here, Maitri, hello, I hope I said that right, Maitri, Maitri, sounds like one of the old seers of uh, the Rig Veda, thanks for watching Maitri, Gari is here, hello Gari, haven't seen you in a long time, joy, 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 so we have been talking for our newest folks, about how the angels talk to us. In what manner do they speak to us? Do they talk to you like me very gently? Oh dear, would you like, if you like, you could do that. Is it a feeling for you? Is it, is it a, a, an omen, external omen? Do you see things? Do you smell things? Is it intuitive? So put down chat in there, type it in, how angels talk to you, how your nature talks to you, how spirit talks to you, how God talks to you. We're just sharing that concept and exploring how we can start to understand how our angels talk to us. And I'm not, and there's no right answer. I'm sharing with you mine. Mark shared a little bit with you. Christy shared a little bit. She sees feathers. Let's see who else shared something about that. Oh, here we go, Marla. I missed this. Marla does oracle and tarot card readings. Her daughter wanted to draw one for her friend's daughter. She drew one, meaning she drew a card, but I didn't feel like it was a 100% message needed for the child. I couldn't shake the feeling. Then I thought that I should make oracle cards for kids. Very cool. Next was to see if they're already in existence. Next thought was I need to do readings for kids too. She promptly offered, ordered a couple of different decks for kids. So beautiful, thank you Marla. So, so you see how the thinking process, you know, she, she kept checking on that. She does readings, her daughter 
did a reading for a child and her intuition was that this, this is not the right kind of card to read for a child. That was her intuition. Then the thought came to her, and this is my way of explaining it, Bird put the thought in her head to see that maybe you could make angel cards. And then the next thought was, well, maybe it's e even easier than that. Maybe they exist. And not only that, but hey, dear, would you like, if you'd like, why don't you think about doing angel reading, tarot readings for children? You're so delicate, so delicate, so delicate, you see? And uh, Marla, did you actually do the, uh, start the readings? How, what was the outcome of that? Tell us uh, some more about that. That's very nice. And put your website if you're actually doing readings. So I'd like to share that with others. Let's see who else to want to make sure I did not leave anybody out. <clears throat> if anybody wants to come in and, and talk online, I'm not sure how you do that. Oh, just type it and say, yeah, I'd like to come online and I can add you into this conversation. I am testing out my new sample blue jeans um, webinar thingy here, and it takes me right into Facebook Live as well. And having a lot of fun with this. We have some great comments from people. Gary says she smells roses. A lot of people do that, you know, and there's this great Saint Teresa and people, it's said that when you smell roses, she's around you. And I've had clients who have, I've seen St. Teresa, and they and I said, they said, yes, I used to sit in a St. Teresa church garden and pray to her all the time, and they smell the roses. It's a lovely, lovely way to, another way to know things are connected. And what works for you may just be, the way that works for you and nobody else. And isn't that sweet? Because now we get into uniqueness, authenticity. You know, Oscar Wilde said, be yourself. Everybody else is already taken. So as you honor your connection with spirit, you feel so good and so special. Then you don't mind being different. Different is very important. The world honors different. The world honors uniqueness on the world level. On the local level, you may get laughed at or try to, don't be like everybody else, blend in, watch out, keep your head down. Well, that's not much of a life, is it? You know, we weren't born to keep our head down. We were born to pick it up and be in joy and shine our light, the light of spirit. And hello, Cheryl. Welcome to the show. You got a little cat there, very sweet cat. We're talking about how the angels talk to us. How do we hear it, see it, smell it, feel it? And if anybody would like to come in on the broadcast and get on the screen here with me and talking, just uh, type that in and I will put you on. We'll try to make that work. It looks like it's just a little button here. So it's a little bit quiet there on your side, folks, and I've kind of pretty much think I've exhausted all the ideas that have come through my head, which means no more ideas. Spirit's saying, okay, if it's quiet in your head, it means we're not sending you anything new. You've, you've covered everything that we feel would be joyful to share. And folks who are watching are not asking questions or sharing or saying, let me come on. So it's been a lovely, uh, it's probably about half an hour, which is nice. I like to keep it about that. So I thank you all for joining us. Those of you who are watching this later on in the recording, do share your thoughts, answer along as you watch. I will try to answer, look at, and I will look at and answer everything that I can, depending how busy I get on any given day. But I do always try to answer everything, or at least acknowledge that you were there watching and, and made a comment or something like that. So have a great weekend. If you're up here in the Northeast, uh, I think we were due for just a little more snow this weekend. 
I believe it's going to warm up on the, the new moon, the new moon of February to the new moon of March. Shows the sun, which is warm. Shows Jupiter, which is pleasant. So we should have a warmer, sunnier, more pleasant month coming up, which would be a nice welcome to the, the cold and the snow and the wind. But that's in a subordinate to the cold and the snow and the wind. So it's hard to say how much more, but it should warm up, it should be sunnier. And that's for the whole northeast, east coast. And I haven't checked any place else just in my locale. But I just share that for those who are on the east coast. OK, Kelly's here. Hey, Kelly, hey, long time no see. We're talking about how the angels talk to us. And if you'd like to share how spirit, angels, God talks to you, just type that right in or tell me you'd like to talk about it live on the screen here and I'll bring you right into this conversation. And Gary says, may the angels wrap their wings around you. Yes, dear, back to you. And for all of you on the broadcast tonight, for all of you watching whenever, may the angels always okay so may the angels always wrap their wings around you you can have you can ask the angels for anything because they're they're not in time and space so you could say angel be with me all the time you know you could say oh ariel be with me all the time and ariel will say fine and if gary says ariel be with me all the time ariel will say fine and if Kelly says, Ariel, be with me all the time, Ariel will say, fine. And she could do that. She could be with everybody who asks her. You could say, have a million angels around me. And they'll always be there if you want them to be there. Have a million angels inside of me. Have the angels just think for me and, and get me to have the right thoughts to get out of the way so I love myself and I honor myself. And I love other people and honor other people. That's how I think. I, those are the kinds of thoughts I have. Just more and more, more angelic, more alignment with spirit, with nature, with a joy. Always, Gary says always. All right, folks, whoops, what happened there? Oh yeah, thanks for the love, folks. Thanks for those hearts. And I think, I'm not sure if you, what you're seeing on your side, but if you want to click share, you could share that with your angel friends. And we will, I've got a whole list of, of topics. You could, let's do this too. Here's some other topics that the angels told me about. What does it l look like living in angel time? How do you live and flow with the angels? What if the angels, in a loving way, sort of ran our life for us? What would that look like? That's one topic. If you like that, let me know. Hello, Christopher. Thanks for joining us. Abundance and the law of attraction. How does that work with angels? There's another topic. Angel economics. How do we think about money with angels? Angel marketing. How do we listen to the angels and try to sell our products and services? Angel leadership, that's probably my favorite one there. How do we let the angels lead us and we be leaders? There's a good topic. Blame, what, how, what's the place of angels when, when we're blaming? Forgiveness, how do angels help us and what is forgiveness all about in the terms of angels? So any of those topics, you can type them in. If there's other topics you'd like me to talk about, type them in. And I think we're going to wrap this up now because it feels about round. We've all come around. We've come back full circle. So for more about me, you can go to orangecowboy.com. And I have programs in... Meditation for Beginners with Advanced Results. I'm teaching this coming summer at Lilydale in New York, the mediumship camp. I will also be teaching there how to find your animal totem through shamanism. 
That'll be in July. I think Monday the 19th, if that's correct. I'm not sure. Other courses, I teach them around the country. I teach the 21 Days of Joy, a joy course. I have an online joy course. And I've just reimagined my Ayurveda training. I have something I call VIP Ayurveda because everybody deserves royal health. And I'll travel anywhere. You get 10 people, I'll come to your locale, spend a half a day helping each of you figure out your dosha, your life, your, your constitution, and what foods are best for you. So all that's on my website, orangecowboy.com. And lots more stuff is there. Actually, if you go to the homepage, there's a, you could just sign up to get this meditation that I created with Tibetan bowls, Tibetan bowl sound bath. And you get that download. It's a half an hour and you could listen to that. And the sound bath, the bowls just wash over you and they meditate you. They just, for people who think they can't meditate or have a difficult time meditating, it's a wonderful way to meditate. So that's my site, orangecowboy.com. All of my books are there. There's my 21 Days of Joy book and the Ayurveda Encyclopedia and a few more books. So thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know how you like this show. You suggest any other topics. Have a great divine, angelic weekend. Joy, joy, joy.